We do want to begin, though, uh, with the big story of the day, which is really impacting two stocks. And as you know by now, it's Starbucks and Chipotle. Starbucks CEO out, Chipotle's CEO, now former Brian Nickel, in. And Starbucks is in the midst of its best day ever. Chipotle is in the midst of one of its worst days in a while. It's the worst S&P performer today. And that's how we'll take it first from the Chipotle side, because Joe Terranova is sitting next to me here. Um, you loved when Nickel got the job. You're still in the stock. Now what? There's nothing I could do about it sitting with you right now. The rules are the rules. At the end of the quarter, we address it. If I had the ability to do something, I would sell it. He is a Hall of Fame CEO in the restaurant industry. He's the best. It's the same type of effect, the same concern that you have when Tom Brady left the New England Patriots and went to Tampa. There is, he's, he's legendary, he innovates, he executes, he elevates culture. He did exactly that. He was able to raise prices at Chipotle and still be able to pass that through. Now he's going to Starbucks. I, like everyone else, we're looking at Starbucks as saying, got to buy the stock. Of course I want to buy the stock today. But there's 105 million shares that have traded already when the 15-day average is only 18 million. So there's a lot of excitement. I'll wait and try and find my spot. Am I being too cute? Probably. But the effect for Chipotle is not a good one at all. Right, so so you, you want to buy Starbucks even though it's, you know, it's not exactly cheap, no. is it? No, it's not cheap. And it, it's, I listen, mean, 26 it's, times, it's, right? It's, it's, is it 26 it's, times? It's, 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 okay, so I, there are problems with the, there's the labor union friction, there's the weakness in China, there's the higher prices that cons, a weakening consumer, do they continue to pay it? There's the discounting. But Nickel brings excitement. He does. And I want to... I want to own a company that Brian Nickel is part of. Do I want to chase it here? No, I don't. But I think at some point in the coming quarters, I'll find an opportunity and I will be a shareholder in a company that he's leading. Joe, I totally agree with you about Starbucks and the stock is still down 3% uh, on the year. It's been a miserable name to own and this is a game changer for sure. But I don't think it all is lost at Chipotle either. I mean, I, I think Boatwright is actually, he's got a great reputation. He was in charge of all kinds of things like throughput and costs and culture, integration of technology. So to me, I, I actually have more. Well, I was looking at Chipotle a last couple of weeks. This is sort of interesting to me. I want to like wait for the dust to settle. But you're right on nickel. And I actually think there's something that he might do in terms of China that when he was at Taco Bell under Yum, they actually separated China from Yum mm -hmm. brands. And I yes. think that's exactly what he's going to do with Starbucks in China. So there's a lot he can do. That's the whole point. Okay. That being said, you know, it's up 21 percent. Hard to chase something up 21 what, percent. What's, what's funny is, you know, on yesterday's program, uh, I had Surratt sitting here and Jim Labenthal sitting here and Carrie, and there was, you know, news of an activist in Starbucks. And I said, is anybody interested in Starbucks? And it was crickets. There were crickets. Nobody interested. Now everybody's interested because of Brian Nickel? Yeah, because yes. the stock went from 300 to 3,000 under Nickel, yes. right? Chipotle did. So that was pretty split, by the way. So, like, he, he has the proven track record. It's up over 700% since he's been there. I'm not minimizing, totally by the way, I don't ask the question in any way um, minimizing the quality of, of him as a CEO, but the CEO is obviously an important job, but if there are fundamental issues with the business itself, he may have a tall task. He, on he, his hands, he okay, yeah, he, or anybody. Yes, would. I agree. He has a tall task on his hand, and maybe that's why I get lucky, and the stock at some point pulls back a little bit. He's clearly the best person that can be put in front of those challenges. And just real quick on Chipotle, the thing that bothers me, the thing that concerns me, is I think this comes at one of the poorer moments for the company. Yeah. I, I, I think this is really bad timing for the company because you have. Bill Ackman, who's done a phenomenal job investing in the company, he's kind of looking for the exit somewhat. He's been selling off some of his stake. In addition to that, the stock had already begun to stumble since the end of June, and you had the concerns surrounding menu portions. I just don't think this comes at a good time. Well, but the stock well, is down 30% okay. from glad, the highs. I'm glad you say that. Because well, then you if fall you, back on valuation. If you look, well, let, let's do this first and foremost, because you want a little juicy sure. nugget. 
um, that I've learned a few moments ago from sources is that Nelson Peltz's Tryan had built a substantial stake uh, in Starbucks over the past few months. They had several conversations with the chair of the board, and they're very happy, I'm told, from these sources with the outcome, and they're out. They sold the stock. Mm. Because of the pop, we're talking about the biggest day ever in Starbucks shares. So Tryan was there. They were building a substantial stake. They had built one. They had conversations. They get the news today like we get. They're happy with it so much that they're like, you know what, 20%, we're out. So they were there. Now they're no longer there. But nonetheless, it's a you bit of a juicy tidbit. You don't need an activist in this stock now. You just don't because of Nickel and his track record. You don't. He's going to build his team around him, and he's going to fix it because he has fixed both, as I mentioned, Taco Bell as well mm -hmm. as Chipotle. But what I was going to say is, before the, the try-in news, is that if you look at a three-month chart of Chipotle, mm -hmm. the stock peaked in mid-June. Yes. OK? Yes. And it had been in a bit of a downtrend. And I'm just saying, as, as, as all of the great things that are being said about the company and the leadership and all that, it went from 68 to 50, right. OK? And then it rebounded a little bit, and then it takes the dive today, where I think it was the low of 48, 49. 48. Some, something uh, uh, around that. So, I mean, this stock was kind of banged up. It was. It, 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 there's no doubt that the stock was, was listen, I, I guess more than anything else, um, over the past several years, personally and through the ETF strategy, and before we even had the ETF strategy, I used to personally buy Chipotle and talk about it on the network all the time, and it was really because of what Steph's talking about, an understanding of what an exceptional CEO in the restaurant industry Brian has been, and it's what he did with Pizza Hut and Taco Bell and the, and the Yum brand. So I guess I'm disappointed because I feel you're at a critical moment. And, 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 I, and I understand what you're saying, Scott, because I think what you're, you're pointing towards is, look, the company's not going back to the place that it was years ago when it, where it had the challenges uh, surrounding uh, the food poisoning. It's not going back to that place, okay? But I think that the company right now still needs that stewardship. And hopefully there's enough intellectual capital still remaining at the company that, in fact, they could, they could maintain uh, the overall strength, but you're falling back on valuation more than anything else right I now. No, because you, but you have 11% same store sales growth. You have 9% traffic growth in just their last quarter. That's still amazing growth. Companies would kill for that kind of those kinds of numbers. And the reason the stock is down is because they do have to put more money into the company on labor, on portion control, on all of that. And I'd argue down 30% from the highs. I think that gross margin fear is largely in the stock. If 